So I like this concept of impact entrepreneur, right? So it's a niche within entrepreneurship where you're actually creating a positive impact in the world. And I really encourage everyone, if you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, don't just chase the money. Don't just become an entrepreneur. Become an impact entrepreneur. I think the key question to ask yourself there is like, what does the world need? Try to identify something that the world really needs. So don't just create stuff for creating stuff. You can create lots of businesses that make money, but what for? Is it making a real difference to people, to the planet, to the environment? Um, you know, those, those are the key questions. Once you find that something that is what the world needs, then try to align it with something that you're passionate about to find that icky guy that then, you know, you're super inspired, super motivated to create that change. But really focus on what does the world need? As hey friends, welcome to Right Off Track, your favorite entrepreneurial resource where we dive into the mindset, strategy, and purpose of entrepreneurs around the world who are sharing their real stories and insights with you. I believe that we all have a unique purpose in life and that embracing our unique and special journey will help uncover that. If this helps you on your journey, I so welcome your support as we grow and improve this channel. Join us, subscribe. I promise you I'm fully dedicated to making this work better every step of the way. So share your feedback, subscribe, share for a friend, and let's go on this adventure together right off track. Enjoy this episode. Going off track is taking a chance on yourself. Following your poles of curiosity. It's making your own decisions. The most wonderful adventure. Hey friends, I'm your host, Anya Smith. Get ready for an exciting chat today. We've got someone who's been making real waves in sustainability. He's behind Good Ripple, a community where over 2,400 people from 95 countries come together to make a difference. Think about that impact. He's also the brain behind Bagmaya and Terrell Engineering, always pushing for a greener world. And if you're on LinkedIn, you might be one of his 23,000 followers where he shares his thoughts on this important topic. This guy knows how to make things happen and inspire others. Stay tuned to hear from the one and only Carlos Tero. So excited to have you here. Thanks, Anya. It's a real pleasure to be here today. So yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm really excited to chat today. Grateful for this. And for our listeners who may be new to you, where in the world are you? So I'm based in England. I'm based in a small town called Shrewsbury. That sounds beautiful. And originally, you are from? Originally, I'm from Gran Canaria, which is also a small island in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> so I'm Spanish. Yeah. Uh, geographically, we're African. But yeah, uh, uh, politically, yes, we're Spanish. <laughs> Beautiful. So all around the world, lots of experiences there. And I mentioned one of the businesses you started. So can you start us off by telling us a little bit about the creation of Good Ripple and what is that mission? Hmm, sure. So our key mission is to connect change makers. So Good Ripple, think of it as Tinder, but for change makers. That will, that's what we really want to create. And the idea came about around eight years ago. It took me that long to sort of come about to, to make it happen. Um, but basically, eight years ago, I started creating events um, for change makers, things about renewable energy and all sorts of topics around sustainability. And I found that it was super difficult to find other change makers around me. I had to spend like so much time and effort and energy into like going to the events, reaching out on all sorts of social media and doing so many things to then find out that maybe this one change maker was living in my street. And that blew my mind. That made me feel like how many other people are around me that want to change the world like me that I don't know about them, right? I think we're really missing that potential of connecting with each other at a whole new level with people around us. Um, so that's when I came up with the idea. I thought like, okay, so there must be something that you could just go and find these people around you. So I started doing lots of research, couldn't find anything. And I'm still like eight years later, I'm still, I've been still looking for it and didn't find it. So I was last year, uh, well, now we're in 2024. So just over a year ago, I thought, well, I'm going to start this because I think it's really necessary to create a lot more collaboration in the world and, you know, find where people are, where, you know, you can go have a chat with somebody in your street or in your neighborhood, brainstorm ideas, come up with uh, maybe a business idea or join a charity, create a movement, join a movement, like, you know, the possibilities are endless. So that's our real goal is to connect these change makers fast, meaningfully, and super easy, make it super easy for them to connect. 
Wow, I love that. It's it sounds a lot classier and more meaningful than Tinder, and I love the mission. So, <laughs> hopefully, as a, as a change maker and leader in the sustainability mission, how do you inspire and mobilize others to fight against climate change? Yeah, good question. And something that I'm super passionate about is just talking about it. You know, because I feel that we don't have enough people talking about this topic. You know, like. Obviously, I share a lot on LinkedIn. So for those of you who are active on LinkedIn, social media, I'm active there. So I share a lot about how to inspire others, how to mobilize people to take action. But I think, you know, offline, off the screens, it's where the really uh, good potential is. And it's about igniting that change in our communities. Because I'm a full believer that the change is going to come from the bottom up. Like, yes, we need governments to change. You know, we need big corporates to change. But they're not going to change until there's a critical mass of people demanding that change. So we really need to ignite change in our communities. I think the first step to do that is just talking about it, you know, just sharing with your neighbors, with your friends, things that really matter to you. And sometimes what I found, and, and there's a lot of research about this already, is that Sometimes you don't need to call it climate change because <laughs> unfortunately, um, you know, when we are in this fight, a lot of people have negative connotations about climate change as a topic. Um, but maybe they're actually super passionate about river pollution, about reducing emissions. I've got friends who are like, yes, we're polluting the world. We are emitting too many emissions. We are destroying biodiversity. We are, uh, you know, consuming too, my, too many resources. But then if you mention climate change, they turn off completely. Yes. So I think it's about adapting and seeing where people are and try to have a conversation that really resonates with them. So sometimes maybe it's just talking about some simple things like pollution or air quality or just the future of our communities. So yeah, I think like, you know, starting those conversations at a very accessible way and understanding where people are, that the ripple effect of that is huge. And we really need to be doing a lot more of that. I love that. What I'm hearing you say is be mindful that this grand concept could be overwhelming for people where it could feel that they, if they can affect that big overarching theme, then why bother? So meet them in a way where it feels actionable and doable wherever they're at. So there's a sense of empowerment at their level and that by inspiring, igniting that passion in each person, like, then we can actually make change because it makes it feel like they have something they can contribute to whatever cause the over, overall um, lies to that overarching theme. 100%. I love that word you say, like empowerment. I think that's where the key is, like how can we empower everyone to become a change maker, right? Because sometimes we feel that we're just a few in our bubbles and, and fighting these big topics. And it's like, we start maybe having arguments about very specific topics like, oh, it's not climate change, it's climate crisis. Well, it's not the climate <laughs> crisis. There's, 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 a poly, there's a poly crisis. Then climate change is not the change, it's how child climate has adapted. And, you know, we get into like all of these technicalities with, right. it's good in a way at, at those level of deep knowledge, but that's not going to empower anyone out there to create yeah. change. And what we need is like 8 billion imperfect change makers taking action rather than just a few... Uh, millions taking perfect action. I love it. So the, the message is take action wherever you are, whatever you can do now. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. And as we're looking maybe at a business level, right, or people who are entrepreneurs are trying to make a change at a broader impact, what emerging trends in sustainability should business be aware of today? Mm, good question. I think a lot of it is going more into the regenerative world, right? We see this world coming up uh, more often. And it's funny because I've been in the sustainability space for over eight years, nine years now, and I hadn't come across that word until like a year ago or so. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even for people who are interested about this, like it's it's still maybe not so common. Um, so I think regeneration, it's, it's really something that we need. And I see a lot of more people talking about it, which is great. And, and it's about, okay, so in the business space, how can we make our businesses more regenerative, right? So mm -hmm. not just sustainable. And, and I mean, I think, again, if you go into technicalities, uh, a definition of sustainability would probably include regeneration. But for people yeah. who are not aware with that term, uh, regeneration is about, you know, giving back to, to nature, giving back to biodiversity and really helping the planet recover from all the damage that we've made. So it's not just 
stopping the damage, but actually helping in a positive uh, way to recreate all of that that's been lost. So yes, yeah, so if businesses looking at regeneration, I think there's going to be lots of them coming on and, and it's a great trend. I'm really happy to see that that happening. And also one that is a little bit more controversial, maybe it's the whole concept of a degrowth. Um, you know, when, when it comes to businesses, there's a, a little bit of a, a, of a conflict there, right? <laughs> Um, and yeah, and it's definitely difficult. Now, I don't know a lot about the whole thing, but I'm really learning more about it to understand, okay, how can we apply some of these concepts into the, the reality that we're living? Because the truth is that, yes, in many ways, we need some of that degrowth to happen. We know that infinite growth in a planet with finite resources, it's, it's just not sustainable. So how can we make that transition to a, a degrowth um, sort of uh, economy and concept? I think it's it's a bit tricky, but we need to make it happen. <laughs> Can you expand on that? That's a little bit new concept for me. If you don't mind us going to this country. So, Diko, how do businesses find that balance between, yes, I have a healthy reward, the upside, but I'm not having negative impact. So, like, finding that degrowth balance. Hmm. Yeah, and and to be honest, I don't have a, a precise answer myself. It's again it's something that I'm really learning a lot. But what I, what we're seeing is that you know when businesses grow too large, um, it, it just becomes unsustainable because of all the supply chains and all the impact that they're making. Um, you know, think about giants like Amazon, Apple, Google. It's it's very difficult to keep those under control and and make sure that everything in their supply chain is ethical, is sustainable. Because of the big scale, our planet cannot sustain that big scale. So I think we're going to see a lot of transition into more small and medium sized businesses and and trying to recover a little bit of that power back from from the big corporates that are sort of controlling the business space right now. And again, like it's, it's a difficult, difficult challenge to navigate, but I'm seeing more and more people getting into this space and really advocating for more sustainable businesses that don't reach that scale of unsustainability. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. I love that. You know, what inspires me is entrepreneurs and people who are trying to make change in the world. And that, that inspires my message is I want more people to be mindful about what impact they're having in the world. Like what is their vision? What is their purpose? How do they live a life that is fulfilling? Because mm -hmm. oftentimes we mask this desire for fulfillment with money. We think that if only we made so much more money, then we'd be so happy. And unfortunately, we know at a logical level that money doesn't make us happy. We've seen it time and time again. If you got a promotion, you're like, oh, somehow this is not making me happier. <laughs> or you see yeah. people who- It lasts for two days. <laughs> Somehow, if you see people who have it all and yet they take their life, you, you know, when you have no, so what, what I'm getting to is that I hope for people who are finding this interesting, this path of empowerment and doing their own thing, doing something new, like they will start questioning, like, why am I doing things? So it's not just in the matter of more, 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 like, it's like, what value am I trying to get? What purpose am I having? And I think asking those questions leads to having a business that's more aligned to fulfillment inside and purpose and impact in the world is more um, meaningful than just having more and more and more. But I'm curious, as maybe a new business, somebody starting out, what questions could they be asking themselves now or from the start to be more sustainable? Hmm. I think a key question for entrepreneurs, because you're totally right, like, you know, and, and if you go on social media, everybody's about making lots of money, becoming a millionaire and, and everyone, everyone's chasing that. Right. Um, and there's a few people who have attained that and everybody wants to be like them. And, you know, I get it. Like, yeah, in our model, we need money to survive and having lots of money, even if not just for the money, but for the freedom, for the possibilities that open to you. Right. Maybe you could yeah. donate everything to charities, but. I think as an entrepreneur, we need to understand that it's not just about making that money, but it's about giving back, as you said. So I like this concept of impact entrepreneur, right? So it's a niche within entrepreneurship where you're actually creating a positive impact in the world. And I really encourage everyone, if you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, don't just chase the money. Don't just become an entrepreneur, become an impact entrepreneur. I think the key question to ask yourself there is like, what does the world need? Right. So it's not like just what am I good at? What are my passions? What do I love? What do I uh, what, what can I get paid for? But what does the world need 
try to identify something that the world really needs. So don't just create stuff for creating stuff. Yeah, we can create lots of businesses that make money, but what for? Is it making a real difference to people, to the planet, to the environment? Um, you know, those, those are the key questions. Once you find that something that is what the world needs, then try to align it with something that you're passionate about to find that icky guy that then, you know, you're super inspired, super motivated to create that change, but really focus on what does the world need. And sometimes even, you know, a lot of the time we, we do it the way around and we think, okay, so I love this. How can I align this with something that the world needs? And another way of doing it is that finding a real problem in the world, something that needs solved, whether it's inequalities, poverty, climate change, whatever you like, and then once you find that problem that isn't solved yet and needs help, then just learn how to enjoy it. You know, there's, there's a powerful skill there in learning how to enjoy something. And because you're doing something that's bigger than yourself, that's creating a purposeful meaning, then normally it becomes fairly easy to enjoy it. You know, so, so just putting that thought out there that sometimes it's finding an issue and then learning how to love it. And, and seeing the meaning of those actions that you're taking is quite powerful as well. Absolutely. And can you share a little bit about your journey and the start of this passion? Because here you are, eight years, you've been inspired, following this community, thinking about how to make impact here. Can you share what originally inspired this mission and how did you see yourself making an impact in the world? Yeah. So funny enough, like nine years ago, I was a very normal guy. I just wanted to make a lot of money in, in my life. And, and my life goals were to have sports cars. And, you know, when I was nice. going to be 30, I wanted a BMW. When I was going to be 40, I wanted a Ferrari. Those were my life goals. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. L luckily, <laughs> I've changed a lot who I am. And I think one key thing that changed me is that as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm from Grand Canaria, and this is a small island in front of Africa, in front of uh, Western Sahara. And I'm lucky enough to have some friends from the Sahara that when I finished my degree, they said, hey, why don't you come here to the Sahara and have a visit? And they was like, okay, I'll go there. So it's funny because it's just a half an hour flight from where I am. Like it takes nearly three hours to get to mainland Spain, but it's only half an hour flight from Grand Canaria to Africa. And I landed there. And I saw a totally different reality to what I was used to seeing before. You know, suddenly I saw lots of poverty. I saw lots of people with no opportunities in life, you know, uh, no access to those opportunities. And that really changed my mind. Because suddenly, as, until that point, I thought that, you know, whatever I had achieved in life was because I was good or I had put the effort, I had put the time. But suddenly I realized there was another factor. And it's because I was born half an hour away from that place that gave me all of those opportunities that then i could go chase but you know regardless of what time effort energy you put into something if you don't have the opportunities you can't go anywhere and that really transformed me and it was like i really need to do something to help more people in the world and finally i dropped all my goals about sports cars and then i started becoming obsessed about how can i change the world how can i help more people how can i help um, people living in extreme poverty and and yeah from then to today I'm be, I've been developing that journey as a change maker learning more about all the topics learning more about how can I contribute towards the cause and and yeah it's been amazing honestly like just for me knowing that wherever I am in my life I can always help someone in a way or another that gives me a lot of meaning and, and you know that's I'm still trying to figure out how to maximize my positive impact. Right now, what I found is, is through good ripple. And, and that's what I'm most focusing right now. Um, but yeah, I think it's all a journey, life of learning and, and seeing how can we all make a difference in whichever way we can, right? I love that. And if somebody is maybe new, or maybe they've heard about this topic, but they're just not quite sure where to start because it feels overwhelming. What advice would you give for people to start living, you know, start living this lifestyle, start taking some action, start making some impact if they're just really new to this? Mm, good question. I think something that really helps is surrounding yourself with people that also care about this. 
And uh, right now, going back to the beginning, it is difficult to find these people around you sometimes. You know, maybe if you're in a big city, you might find, you know, green groups, sustainability groups. So consider joining some of those goes there. Because when you start hearing ideas from other people, sharing about these things, all of that learning, you know, it becomes a ripple effect. Like it makes you more interested. And then you go on and you read a book about the topic or you watch a documentary or you talk to your neighbor about it. And all of those little moments, they add up to the point where you build up that motivation. It's like, okay, I want to do something. Now I'm going to do this about this topic, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I think surrounding yourself with people in this space um, whether that's through groups or joining online events or local events. Uh, if you can't do it with your community, I think that's a lot more powerful. Try to find out if there's already some groups in your area um, that care about sustainability, whether it's Greenpeace, um, Friends of the Earth, or any other local small groups as well. Um, that's super helpful. And then just start learning about it. I think for me, learning about these topics have been quite revealing because as you learn more, you build up that motivation. So consider, you know, podcasts or books or documentaries or just random videos on YouTube, you know, from, from people that are inspiring. I think that really helps to build up that motivation. Absolutely. I love that advice. So meet, meet this journey wherever you are at, find people who are like-minded and see what unfolds, you know, just, it has to be, it can be simple. It doesn't have to be this overwhelming. Everything starts if a mount climbing a mountain, it could just be one step at a time. Yeah. And also I uh, say, so don't compare to self yourself with others, because I think it, that's, that's way too common that we see somebody doing a lot and we're not doing enough. And then mm -hmm. rather than inspiring, it feels like, oh, it's demotivating. Right. But yeah. as I said, we are all in different parts of this journey, right? Like eight years ago, I didn't have a clue about sustainability. And still today, I'm learning a lot from people who are a lot beyond me. And but I'm not comparing me with them because I know they've, you know, they've got a, a longer track behind them or whatever opportunity. Sometimes you can learn quicker because something happens to you. So not comparing yourselves to others, just taking them as a reference and say, yeah, I want to be there. So, you know, I'll, I'll use that as an inspiration. But don't think that you're not good enough because you're not doing enough already, because that's not going to help. Just start where you are, yeah. take one small step at a time and just look backwards. You know, when you are five years, 10 years ahead, you'll see that that little step make a big difference. So, and I can see somebody looking at you big, okay, you have 24,000 followers on LinkedIn. Like, how do I compare <laughs> to that? How do I even start? But can you talk about how you started your social media journey and what have you learned about promoting a meaningful message on there in a powerful way. Yeah. So it's funny because I've been not using social media a lot for the last few years. I, I'm not really a social media person, um, but I've been using LinkedIn a lot because I find it is like a place where you can learn a lot. And I feel that the fact that LinkedIn has people's faces associated with their employers make it a lot more... Um, you know, like the content there, I feel is more valuable. There's less noise, if that makes sense. Um, so I was using LinkedIn for a few years and just over a year ago, when I came up with the realization, like, yes, I want to do good ripple. I thought, okay, so how can I start gauging momentum? How can I find out whether other people think it's a good idea or not? And I love writing. So I thought, well, maybe I can just start writing stuff on LinkedIn, share it and see if anybody likes it as a, as a test, you know? So that, that was my initial idea. And, and I started writing on LinkedIn, not knowing really what I was going to write about or how, um, but I made a commitment from one day I said publicly on LinkedIn, from today, I'm going to post something every day. And, you know, I know most people say, if you, you're not doing something, start step by step and start small. I think that also works. But for me, making that commitment of saying from now on, I'm going to write every day because I really wanted to do that. And, and that really helped since then. I've been posting uh, pretty constantly every day on LinkedIn. And, you know, I think the key message is just start, right? If you're thinking yeah. of sharing something, if you've got something to share, just start. You don't have to have a perfect plan or you don't have to be a best, you know, the best um, content writer, just start because you're going to learn a lot along the way. Like I'm still learning a lot. And, and you know, the, the fact that you start, it gives you that motivation. Then you start meeting other people who are in the same journey. You support each other and, you know, you keep progressing. And in terms of learnings, I've, what I've learned is that, you know, giving away a lot 
is the best way to 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 grow um if you want to create your personal brand whether it's linkedin or any other platform like give away everything you know everything you've learned just give it away don't keep anything for yourself and just think about the people who are learning the people who are in your journey maybe just a couple steps behind what can you share to help those people and yeah just share as much as you can create as much value for them as possible and you know eventually it will pick up i think having that consistency really helps um you know if you if you set yourself whether it's posted once a week twice a week or every day um it doesn't matter but as long as you keep that consistency going through it will really help people and you start um sort of bringing people around you and suddenly also it's not about you creating but co-creating with other people i think it's about because i learn a lot from other people on linkedin as well and to me that's priceless right um so yeah i think it's the key is just get started then you know we have all this fear of oh but nobody's going to read it and yeah probably the first few weeks or months a lot of people will ignore it but that's part of the process you know also learning how to embrace that it's uh it's a good learning itself so yeah i i really encourage everyone to give it a go it's uh it's definitely worth it it's a long-term uh game but it's totally worth it i love it and i think it's so important to also just adjust where wherever you're at in the journey so for me for example i started with linkedin because that's where my meta day connections were and then honestly it wasn't my favorite platform. Maybe just like the energetically as a mom hustling kids, like trying to be there in the morning. It was like, ah, and I gave myself such a hard time at first about it. And then I realized, well, why <laughs> giving yourself such a hard time about it? Like, why am I really so worried about this? So I've expanded my presence to different social media networks. It, it just felt right for me. And now I still post on LinkedIn. I still like, it, and I'm actually planning to be on there more regularly, but it's because what I'm doing has become clear. So my message to anybody who is like, hey, if you feel ready to share that inspiration more often, awesome. If you don't, it's okay to start again where you're at and what feels right to you and honor that intuition and then evolve it as you go. There's not like a one size fit all. Like you have to honor yourself and not make it something you hate. Like that's the key. Don't do something that you hate because somebody told you like, that's a good idea. And with that yeah. in mind, you actually recently posted that you were off LinkedIn for a month just like whoa for a creator that's that's ballsy so how do you also honor your own values and create boundaries for yourself as an entrepreneur hmm yeah it's, it's definitely not easy you know i think after after a year posting every day on linkedin you know we've got this voice in our head saying hey you've got to be there every day because one people are expecting you to be there and and two, you know, the, the algorithm needs you to be there because otherwise you're gonna lose all your traction. And and you know, in one way, yeah, it's true. It's true that you know all the effort that we put in creating this content, sharing, um, it builds up, right? So in a way, you want to keep that momentum because it's true that you know you can use it to to reach more people. And and to me, it's not just about fancy numbers, but it's about maximizing my positive impact in the world right if i can inspire more people and they can take more actions then it's a good ripple effect um but yeah to me it's like i'm I, i'm lucky that i i kind of learn how to listen to my body and my mind and you know when, when i get to some periods where i'm like pretty overwhelmed because like i've got so much to do there's something in my head that says, hey, you need to disconnect a little bit. Um, and I do a lot of meditation. I think that's probably one of the key things that I've, it's helped me uh, become a lot more aware about myself, about my feelings, my emotions, my thought process. Um, so yeah, just before Christmas, I was like, yeah, we're going to go to Italy to see my girlfriend's family there. And I really want to be present there with them. You know, I don't want to be like uh, being away and checking my phone and being on my laptop. Yeah. So, so yeah, I set up to, okay, so I'll disconnect whilst I'm there. And then we went to the Canary Islands where I'm from to see my parents. Um, so again, I didn't want to be on the phone next to them or, you know, just uh, not, not really spending that quality there. Cause I see them once a year, twice a year, maximum normally. So right. whenever I'm with them, I really want to make the maximum out of that. So, you know, it was a conscious effort to say, okay, so I'm going to ignore LinkedIn. I know this is going to have a toll, um, but I'm, I'm happy to pay that toll because it's aligned with my values and I want to be spending that time with my family, with my girlfriend, with my friends. 
and and I did it. And yeah, it's not the end of the world. You know, you can stay one month away from LinkedIn and the, the world doesn't end. Um, you know, it is true that now, for example, I've got like hundreds and hundreds of DMs to go through, uh, which is going to take some time to you know, me sitting down there and go through them because I really want to respond to everyone yeah. and, you know, continue because I, I love meeting change makers and, and getting connected with yeah. them. But yeah, it's going to take some time. And, and it's true that I also missed some opportunities. You know, there were some DMs that I checked yesterday that were asking me to what is going on a podcast. There was one to apply for a TEDx, <laughs> for a TEDx talk that is like, oh, damn it, I should have been checking my DMs. But you know, it's not the end of the world. I think knowing that there's going to be uh, trade-offs and, and being happy with those as long as it's what your values are telling you that's what really matters. And, and, you know, for me having that time off, it really helped a lot with my creativity, you know, like suddenly I, I had so many ideas while I was being off that I probably wouldn't have had it. I was just, just focused on getting stuff done. So yeah, I think there's a lot of positive. I really encourage everyone to, you know, take some time off, not just LinkedIn, but all digital world, like take time off from screens and really connect with the people around you, the world around you, nature around you. It's a powerful experience. Absolutely. And also not only did you survive it, but the post was very popular from just what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely people were missing you and excited to have you back. There was no loss of momentum. It felt like. Yeah. I didn't expect that at all. Yeah. I was thinking maybe five people will see it and comment maybe, but yeah, suddenly it, it reached a lot of people. So yeah, it seems that, yeah, the algorithm is, is a bit more forgiving than I thought. <laughs> And besides missing some DMs, and I hope the TEDx thing still happens, but what's the significant challenge you face in your entrepreneurial journey and how did you overcome it? Mm. I think for me and probably for any entrepreneur, time is the biggest challenge, right? Because we've got so many ideas. We want to do so many things. And I think for any entrepreneur, but especially more in the sustainability space, because we have big pressing issues, right? Um, climate change, biodiversity loss, extreme poverty is like, we really need to solve this as quick as possible. So we have extra pressure to do more things faster. And, and that's for me, it's, it's, I, it's really overwhelming in a way. Like I've got my to-do list, it becomes longer and longer than I can tackle those, those tasks. Um, but in a way, I feel that, again, going back to meditation, that has really helped me deal with all of it. And if people are not doing it, I totally <laughs> encourage people to try meditation because, you know, like if you want to build muscle, you need to do exercise. If you want to understand your mind and be more present, you need to do meditation. Like there's other ways that you can be more present, but to really understand that mind process, there's nothing like meditation to really sit down and just watch yourself. So I do a lot of that and really helps me, you know, when I get overwhelmed, I really know how to limit it so it doesn't get to anxiety or stress um and to me that makes all the difference um because you know I, i'm really overwhelmed like i want to do so many things i really don't have the time to do all of them so you know sitting and knowing okay this is what i can do today because the day's got these hours and i'm not going to sacrifice sleep or i'm not gonna i'm not going to sacrifice other things that are important to me so with this time i'll do what i can and I'll sleep well tonight because I know that I've done what I can. And and I think just having that uh, mental tool to be able to say, hey, I cannot do any more because physically I can't. And, and just being at ease with yourself and saying that, I think it's it's powerful. It has really helped me reaching this point without burning out uh, yet, at least. <laughs> And you can tell by your energy, right? There's a, there's a clear energy that you have that's bright and positive, and we need more of that. So I love that there's this element about sustaining that for yourself, sustainable energy within. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, we, we, we need to cultivate this, this sense of hope, right? Because I think to me, that's what keeps me going. Because if we go into the more pessimistic, negative side of things, like, you know, the world's going to end and whatever, then... That doesn't motivate anyone to take action. And yeah, maybe it motivates some people to take action, but not sustainable action. Because if you're doing something from a negative point of view, and you said it before, you really need to enjoy what you're doing. You need to love what you're doing to make it sustainable on time. Because otherwise, or you ever will give up because it's not giving you any meaning, or you'll burn out because you're not aligned with what you're doing. 
So I think having that positive, optimistic, hopeful um, mindset, it really helps to keep that sustainable action going. Thank you for being a role model of that. And one thing you mentioned, <laughs> a concept that caught my ear that we haven't gotten to yet is the concept of cl uh, climate funnel. So can you talk about what is it and how does it apply to your work? Yeah, so that's a concept that I came about uh, a few months ago. And I mean, it's not genius. It's basically taking the concept of a funnel that's quite typical in sales and marketing where, you know, you need to drive people through different stages and just apply it to the climate change space. And, you know, it can be applied to any other topic for that reason. But I think it's super important in climate because what I see is that a lot of people in the sustainability space, climate change space, you know, we are at the bottom of that funnel where we're taking, you know, high impact systemic change actions. And that's amazing, but we're not going to change the world unless we convince a lot more people to come into the funnel. Because at the moment, a lot of people are outside of that funnel being unaware of most of these issues, or maybe at the very top of the funnel where you just have an awareness like, yeah, you've probably heard of climate change, but so what? What are we doing? What can we do? So it's super important that we use this concept to communicate better with others, you know, and, and the final basis has got four stages. So at the top is aware, the next one's motivation, then low impact individual action. So that's things like changing your water bottle with a reusable one or, you know, using a bamboo toothbrush and then moving down to the high impact actions where it's creating movement, joining movements, uh, calling up on your global leaders and um, setting up a, a sustainable business and things that really take that collective action to another level. And, you know, we really need to be bringing people into the funnel and helping them move through one stage to the other because, there's no chance that somebody who has never heard about climate change or just heard it, but they, they don't know much about it, suddenly wake up one day and start taking high impact actions. It's very, very unlikely. Like, it might happen, but it's very unlikely. It, most commonly people move through these stages. Like I've moved through them myself and I see other people doing the same. So going back to what we were saying before, like meeting people where they are. So using that concept to understand, okay, are they not aware are they just aware but not knowing much are they motivated but not taking action yet or are they taking maybe low impact action so once you identify where they are you can tailor how you communicate with them you can tailor how you inspire them to move to the next one right because if somebody's unaware you're not gonna go like hey i'm going to this climate protest tomorrow you need to join me mm, chances are they won't join you right and probably it's gonna create even a negative feeling so if they're unaware, maybe you just start talking about, hey, did you see the flood that we had last week here in, in Shrewsbury? That was pretty bad, right? And I see it happening more often. Do you see that as well? And, you know, just start talking about uh, something that, that's relatable to them and not this concept that's abstract and long in time. Um, but yeah, then somebody that's already taking low impact actions we can help them inspire them to take more collective high impact actions. So yeah, using that concept to understand where people are and that we all move through those different stages is key to adapt how we communicate with others. Because the ultimate goal is rather than the funnel being like this, where there's yeah. a few uh, a few high impact and a lot of aware, we need yeah. to shift it like this, mm -hmm. where a lot of people um, at the bottom are taking high impact action. And that's where inevitably we'll get systems change. I love that example. My entrepreneur ears hear it. Whatever you're doing as a business, whatever, whatever purpose you are seeing, think about that funnel. Where are your potential clients? Where is the potential impact at? Like, where are the people that you want to reach? Where are they in their journey? Instead of trying to reach all of them the same message, like, you should do this, or this is going to help you all understand in your impact, whatever you're trying to change, like think about where people could be at in that journey of their understanding of their awareness of their motivation and prepare those different level of messaging so that you are meeting people where they're at and then helping them move to the next space. That's brilliant. I love that, Carlos. Yeah, thank you. And I think it's super powerful because it really helps you understand your audience a bit more, right? And ultimately, mm -hmm. it's all about understanding the people that we are talking to. Because, for example, I see a lot of um, content that, for example, is saying, well, you know, individual action won't change the world. And I think that's fine to say if you're talking to people down at the bottom of the funnel where they are more in the low impact action, where you want them to move to the high impact. 
But if somebody who's at the very top of the funnel or outside yeah. hears that, they're going to be totally disempowered to take any action. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. so individual action won't change anything. So it's the government and the corporate. So I'll sit right. back and relax, right? So we need to be careful with how we communicate to try and maximize the impact of that message. That's so important. Again, understand your audience and what is going to empower or disempower them at different stages of their journey towards what you want them to get to. Hopefully, use this for good. If you're listening to this, use this for good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And can we talk a little bit more about a good ripple? So yes. here we are, 94 countries around the world. People are present in this app. It's incredible. Can you share a couple of examples? It doesn't have to be specific about what connections, what changes have happened through this app. Yes. So it's it's really amazing that, you know, a lot of our impact is hard to measure, right? Today, right. we're super focused on, you know, measurable metrics and things like that. But a lot of what happens with Good Ripple, and, and this is something I'm passionate about myself, is like, yes, we need all of these metrics, but we also need the non-measurable important stuff. Yes. That I think the problem that when we focus too much on numbers, we ignore everything that's not measurable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, the good ripple effect is that, oh, you come into this group, you meet somebody that maybe shares an idea that you didn't have before and suddenly sparks something in you and you start taking action. It's so hard for us to measure that we really want to try and do something because obviously, you know, it, people like sharing these things. Um, but some things that have happened is that, for example, a lot of people have come in in collaborations thanks to Good Ripple. So, you know, maybe like a coach and somebody that was looking for coaching, they've come there, they met each other, and now they're helping each other. And then that person that's being coached is able to create more positive impact thanks to that. Um, there's also been some um, partnerships instead of people collaborating with different businesses as well, helping each other. Um, there's been some people who have found some internships and some jobs through the platform. So, you know, there's all sort of things happening in there. And uh, what I really love is that some connections that were made maybe a year ago, I yeah. see them now still engaging, creating things together, collaborating. So that's really powerful. Um, we've got to a point where we're actually seeing a lot of people come in saying, hey, my colleague recommended me to join or hey, a friend of mine told me to come in this group. So it's no longer just coming through the uh, content on LinkedIn, but the word of mouth is happening right now. So that's a really good sign that people are finding value there and they, they're valuing those connections. Like, wow. I guess at a lower uh, level is it just being there, seeing that there's other change makers around you, that you're not alone. That in itself is super powerful. Again, we cannot measure what the, what the outcome of that is, but there's a lot of people in the change making space that they feel quite alone in front of big issues and suddenly yeah. come in and see, oh, there's another 2,400 people here who care as much as I do. That's yeah. empowering. Then, okay, we can do this together, right? So just having that feeling, it's, it's quite a powerful um, outcome in itself. That's beautiful. When I started my entrepreneurial journey, on LinkedIn, I knew nobody on this journey. And I just started sharing my mission, DMs, found people that seemed like they're doing something similar to me. And I reached out to them. And I know how much it changed my sense of, you know, what's possible when just a few people connected with me. I know what a difference it made for me when just a few people said like, hey, I understand where you're coming from. I support you. And I can only imagine that when you find like-minded people on something you're passionate about or even curious about, like just how that changes that sense of what's possible, like the impact you can have, the sense of solidarity and resilience you can have on a meaningful journey. So I love that this community is there helping people make this uh, seem possible and inspire people to be more meaningfully involved in this. And now that we're starting up 2024, new year, new goals. Are there any upcoming initiatives at Good Ripple that you're particularly excited about? Yes. So this year is when we want to start testing a pro membership of the community. So right until now, everything uh, is being free. And, and I love that. And we want to keep that because the, the whole purpose of Good Ripple is to bring every change maker into the platform and create more change makers. So we want to make it super accessible for everyone, super inclusive. But we also need to make it sustainable financially. <laughs> and, and that's going to be one of the challenges this year is we have all of these ideas to see how can we create more value so that people yeah. would be happy to um, pay for that membership. 
Um, so we're thinking of having that pro membership where we add a lot more value to the community members. Um, we want to create this together with the community. So it's not just me coming up with these ideas, but I want to bring the community together and say, hey, we've got these ideas. What do you say about them? Or what do you want from this community that we can create a lot more value for you? And I will make it happen. So I'm, I'm super excited about that because there's quite a few people who are, you know, really supportive of Good Ripple and they want to do more with it. So I'm really, really excited to come together, co-create with these people a better Good Ripple for everyone and hopefully launching this pro membership of the community. And, and yeah, seeing if that will help us grow the community, put more energy and give more value back to the members. I love it, Chris. I'm excited. Keep us posted on all of these updates and I will link everything here in the description. Can you share with our audience, where can they find you? Where can they find this amazing group and anything else you want to add about using these resources? Yeah, so the best way is on LinkedIn. Uh, if you search me there, Carlos Terol, and just send me a connection request. I love meeting change makers. And you can find the link to join the community there on the, on the platform. Otherwise, just go to goodripple.co and you'll get to the community there. Beautiful. And just to repeat that, goodripple.co, so C-O. So if you yes. have extra M, just yes. be mindful of that. Tricky one. Yes, right thank you. Tricky one. Yeah, one of those, like, yeah, the other domain is already registered. So. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that did face you. I love that. And one thing you talk about monetization, I think it's so important. You have to find a way to make things sustainable, right? You have to find a way to make money. And I love that you're approaching it from a way of how do you provide more value to the community? How do you talk about what would that value look like from the community's impact so that make sure that as you're growing and making it you know, a long-term resource, it's also really aligned to what the community needs. So that's beautiful, essential, and I can't wait to see like what, what that grows to be. Um, and here at Writing Track, we wrap up with three rapid-fire questions. So whenever you're ready. Yes. Perfect. Um, the most inspiring change maker you've met? Um, Dan Sherrod Smith. He was on the podcast. So if you want to hear. Yes. About him. <laughs> I, I love, I, I love what he does. I, I actually met him in person this week for the first time after over a year, you oh. know, talking and exchanging over Zoom and LinkedIn. I met him in person this week and it's been like amazing. Like he's honestly oh. a, a big hero of mine. Wow. He referred me to you. So he was the one that introduced us. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. I, I, I actually <laughs> didn't remember that. Yes. Thanks. Uh, you mentioned. Yes. <laughs> okay. Your go-to resource for staying updated on sustainability trends. Hmm. Uh, Illuminum. So it's a platform where they share everything with sustainability and they share all these posts about thought leaders. I love it. Oh, thank you. Awesome. And last but not least, in the positive sense, going off track is... Ah, going off track for me, I think it's following your values and, you know, not following what everybody else is doing, but following your heart, your values and having your own vision. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Carlos, this was amazing. I love that you talked about all these important concepts. You talked about meeting people where they're at. You inspire people to be impact entrepreneurs. And not just think about how do you just get more, but think about why you're doing it. How is it going to change the world? And you asked us to ask what does the world need as opposed to what do we just need? So if all yeah. you're listening, I hope you gain something out of it. I hope you learn more about entrepreneurship and about sustainability. And I welcome you to share this with somebody else who might be starting this journey, who wants to learn more and share with us what questions you have for Carlos. And I'll be happy to pass this on. And as always, let's take over the world together right off track. Thank you so much, Carlos. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Anya, for having me here. It's been an amazing chat. And also thank you for doing what you're doing. Like you're really inspiring lots of people and how wonderful is that? So thank you, Anya, for doing this. My pleasure. My pleasure. Until next time. See you. Yay.